Señorita, prepare los documentos en español. <laughs> Did you hear that? Hold on. Whoa, Duolingo exposed here. They messed up here. Listen to that. Señorita, prepare los documentos en español. <laughs> prepare. Okay, that's wrong. It's prepare. One year ago, I took Duolingo's Spanish placement test, and I absolutely aced it because I'm an alpha male. But then everyone left comments on that video saying, Nathan, that's actually the easiest test you could take on Duolingo. You got to take this test. So then I took another test on Duolingo. Apparently it's hardest test. But then the other day I was looking at Duolingo's Spanish curriculum, and I realized that they have a new hard updated final boss test. Now, if you're wondering, I'm the Spanish teacher. My name is Nate. And if you'd like to learn Spanish from me, you can do so at my website, SpanishFromNate.com. Y si más prambolo, vamos a darle. Keep. Are you serious, bro? This is literally easy cash. So to keep is mantener. Red is like a net, or it can also be like a network. And then we have construir, which is to construct. Mantener. Psh, mantener. Come on, that's facilito. Señorita. Compre esos ah. relojes. <laughs> All right, cool. So we have señorita compre esos relojes. The verb compre here in this sentence, this is what we call a formal command in Spanish because we're saying señorita, which in this case, we would use usted. We'll say compre instead of compra. So we'll have miss buy those watches. Money. Ella blank la cerveza fría. Once again, we have the verb mantener and We'll conjugate it, which is mantiene. It has a little stem change there. Weird sense, but whatever. El limón está verde todavía. Okay, el limón está verde todavía. Todavía is a really great word to know. It means still. It can also mean yet. So we will say the lemon is still unripe. There we go. Sorry, that confused me a little bit. Ba -ba -da -ba. Yep, so here it says it's green, but that can also mean it's unripe. Yo blank una casa en las nubes. Okay, once again, now we have the verb construir. Uh, and here we're going to put construyo, which is first person singular. So let's take a look. I'm building a house in the clouds. Yeah, you are. Te incluyo nuestro grupo. I would hope so because I got major FOMO. So here we have te incluyo en nuestro grupo. Okay, so te is what we call an object pronoun. This is actually what we call an indirect object pronoun. In this case, the word grupo would be the direct object here and te is being indirectly affected by it. So it'd be the indirect object pronoun. So this is going to be should I include you in our group? Great. If you just take off these question marks and you just said, te incluyo en nuestro grupo, that could also turn into a statement. So instead of saying, should I include you in our group? Now this could turn into, I include you in our group, if that was just a statement. Lola dice que siempre blank a Max porque hace un pastel delicioso. <laughs> Duolingo, what's going on, man? What's up with these sentences? Here we're seeing three different words, amado, amar, and amará. Okay, so amado is what we call the past participle. So it's something that's already happened. Amar is the infinitive, right? It's an AR verb because it ends in AR. In Spanish, we have three different kinds of verbs, AR, ER, and IR verbs. So amar means to love, and then amará, which means will love. So in this case, it seems like Amara will make the most sense because we have Lola dice que siempre she will always love Max because he makes a delicious cake. Good for Max. Okay, great job. Señorita, prepare los documentos en español. <laughs> Did you hear that? Hold on. Whoa, Duolingo exposed here. They messed up here. Listen to that. Señorita. Prepare los documentos en español. <laughs> prepare. Okay, that's wrong. It's prepare. The most important sounds in the Spanish language are the vowels, which are A, E, I, O, U. Okay, so the pronunciation in Spanish is A, E, I, O, U. Even Duolingo is getting it wrong here. So it's they're saying prepare. Miss, prepare the documents in Spanish. Nice. Feeling good so far. Aquí están las llaves de su cuarto. Descanse. Sé que está... Okay. Oh, interesting. All right. So once again, here we're talking in the usted form. Okay. So someone is saying, hey, here are the keys for your room. Take a rest or just rest. I know you are. In this case, we have the verb or we have the word cansado, meaning tired, dormido, meaning sleepy, and perdido, meaning lost. So in this case, cansado makes the most sense. 
Really nice. Here we go. Oh, wow. I've never seen this. This is a little image. Interesting. Okay. Señor, blank su coche enfrente de la entrada del hotel. All right. So we have the word envíe, which means send. Salga, which means leave, but like to leave out of somewhere. Venga, which is like to come. And estacione, which is to park. Okay, estacione. So, so, señor, estacione su coche enfrente de la entrada del hotel. Once again, that verb estacione is a formal command. So it comes from the verb estacionar, meaning to park. So we cut off the AR and then we're going to, instead of saying estaciona, which would be the formal command, we're gonna flip the ending as if it were, for example, an ER verb. And we'll have estacione. If you wanna learn beautiful Spanish and sound like a native Mexican speaker, then you just, you have to do it, okay? You just have to. Please, all right? I need to pay my rent here in Mexico City. <laughs> Next, mi perro blank las almohadas, okay? So now we have the verb destruir, which is an IR verb meaning to destroy, and we'll have destruye, which is in the third person singular, mi perro, okay? Sergio, te lo repito, no puedes poner los pies sobre la, and here we have a image of him putting his feet on a table. So we have mesita. Mesita, mesita could be uh, like a little table or also kind of like a night table. This house cost me 100,000 pesos. Nice. This is going to be a really good one. So let's go ahead and uh, and create a sentence. Also, I can tell it's getting a little more difficult. So that's great. Esta, Esta casa, casa me, me costó, costó mi, mil. Oh, no. Mi. Cien. Cien. Mil. Pesos. pesos. All right, so before I put this in, let's take a look at this sentence. Esta casa, okay, esta means this. Now we have three different ways that we can say this in Spanish. We have este, which is the masculine, esta, which is the feminine, and esto, okay, it's neutral. If you don't know what the gender of something is, you can say, que es esto, what is this? We have the same exact idea here for the words ese, esa, Eso. You might have heard the phrase like, hey, que onda ese? Right? Okay, that's some slang, but also, ese actually means that in Spanish. Okay, so ese is the masculine, esa, feminine, eso, neutral. Esta casa me costó cien mil pesos. That looks great. All right. Uh, me costó, it cost me. Me is once again an object pronoun here. Reserve un mes antes si quiere una blank en esta Hotel. Vamos a decir una habitación. Habitación. Once again, we're having a lot of uh, formal commands here, which is pretty interesting. If we were speaking informally to someone, the verb reservar is an AR verb. So the informal command here would be reserva. In this case, we have the formal command, which is reserve, but the informal command would be reserva. Habitación is a room. Great. Uh, they dreamed that they had a castle. Ooh, okay, this is a little bit more complicated. Ellos, Ellos soñaron, soñaron que, que tenían, tenían un castillo. castillo. All right, that looks good. Double check. Soñaron, coming from the infinitive AR verb, soñar, meaning to dream. We have ellos soñaron, which is the preterite, meaning it happened once and it's over. So they dreamed and it's done. Eric, compraste jamón otra vez. Te lo repetimos, no comemos carne. carne. Okay, we don't eat meat. Jamón is ham. Latas are cans, like a can of soda, una lata. Vegetales are vegetables. And gorras, I don't know why they put that word in there, is hats. All right, te lo repetimos. This is kind of a cool thing going on. So here, in that little phrase, te lo repetimos, we're seeing two object pronouns playing together. So te is what we call the indirect object pronoun, okay, representing you, and lo is the direct object pronoun. In this case, it means it. Now, lo, in this case, meaning it, is representing basically, do we need to tell you again? Why are you hitting the wall? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, tú. Tú, por, por qué golpeas, golpeas la, la pared. pared. Okay, that looks pretty good. Something interesting here. The verb hitting, right? This is an ing verb in English. In Spanish, we also have ing verbs in what we call as the present progressive. The verb to hit, golpear. Typically, you could say, ¿Por qué estás golpeando la pared? Meaning, why are you hitting the wall? Both of these mean the exact same thing. However, sometimes we'll use the present tense here, present tense indicative, and we'll use it 
almost like an ing thing why do you hit the wall but it could also mean why are you hitting the wall if something is near in time then you can say you can use that idea of the present indicative Tengan un hermoso viaje. wow okay so now we have to type in spanish this is pretty cool Tenga un hermoso viaje. i'll uh, slow it down so you can hear it Tengan un hermoso <laughs> okay, so actually it'd be tengan. Tengan is once again a command. Now this is actually a command for the ellos, ellas, ustedes form. Tengan un hermoso viaje. Okay, nice. Get out of the yard. Okay, salgan, salgan. Del, del jardín. jardín. That looks pretty good to me. Get out of the yard. Okay, once again, salgan is a command for the ellos, ellas, ustedes form. Mi amigo Juan es listo. All right, that's an easy one. Mi amigo Juan es listo. All right, mi amigo Juan es listo. All right, let's slow it down for you. Mi amigo Juan es listo. All right, so interesting thing here with the word listo, you might be thinking that means ready. And actually in this situation, listo means smart or intelligent. Mi amigo Juan está listo would mean my friend Juan is ready. Whereas mi amigo Juan es listo, that's talking about his character. So we would say he is smart. All right, very nice. Like we said, it means smart, not ready. The word green is verde. Uh, when it comes to pronouncing V's in Spanish, we actually oftentimes pronounce V's like a B sound. Nadie sabe que sucederá en 10 años. Okay. Nadie sabe que sucederá en 10 años. Okay, let's slow it down. Nadie sabe que sucederá en 10 all right so sucederá okay this is the future in spanish which will mean to happen now an interesting thing about the future in spanish you can use two different things you can use this future tense or you can use my favorite formula ir plus a plus infinitive so in this case if we were to use that formula we could say nadie sabe que va a suceder en 10 años now if you're just learning spanish using that idea of ir which means to go plus a, which means to, T-O, and then the infinitive, so suceder in this case, oftentimes much easier than having to learn this other future tense that we have in Spanish, okay? So let's take a look, all right. Uh, oh, okay, I forgot my accent there. Nadie sabe que sucederá en diez años. An interesting thing with accents is that que with an accent means what. Que without an accent means that. It can also mean who or whom and things like that, depending on the context. The circle. Um, I'm assuming it's going to want el in there. So el círculo. All right. All right. Nice. Say it to me later. Ooh, okay. This could be interesting because I'm curious if it will mark me for using like luego instead of después. Señorita, dímelo luego. Okay, let's look. Oh man, okay, I'm actually a little worried about this one. Especially because I'm having to type, I'm a little worried it's gonna want something different. Yeah, that looks good to me though. Ah, wait, no, because it's gonna want the formal command. Okay, digamelo. Oh, see, that was tricky. I told you, okay. I'm actually kind of scared for this one. Okay, all right, we could have also said más tarde. Sometimes you can also say después, um, which can be after, but also it means kind of like later. We suppose she's sick. Suponemos que está, okay, está enferma. All right, that looks pretty good to me. We suppose she's sick, suponemos que está enferma. We'll put ella in there for extra clarification. I don't want to, to, to ding me. Suponemos que está enferma. We suppose that she's sick. Nice. Oh, okay, it's a good one. Why don't you return the shirts? Por qué no devuelves las... I'm gonna put camisas. Here in Mexico, we'll say playeras for like a t-shirt like this. Camisa would be like a button-up shirt and then camiseta can also just mean like a regular shirt like this. Oh man, I'm wondering if it's gonna ding me for putting camisas instead of camisetas. Let's try camisetas. Por qué no devuelves las camisetas? Why don't you return the shirts? That looks good to me. So it actually had also, it had put las camisas. So both worked there. I think that was it. Let's take a look. Challenge complete. Wait a second. 
What is this? There is an even harder one. We're gonna jump to section eight then, because this looks like the hardest one. It looks like section nine is daily refresh. Oh my gosh, I actually have to take this test, which is even harder. Haré la habitación más pequeña, más grande. But I don't know, that sounds weird. If you want to become conversationally fluent in Spanish as fast as possible, check out the Fluent Spanish Speaker Academy. Here's what some of our current members have to say. One of my students, Yuen, had a very important Spanish exam coming up, and he said, It's been a while since I've spoken to you, but just to let you know, I've done my Spanish speaking exam. It went really well, and I took your advice about speaking Spanish every day with someone, and it has really boosted my confidence in speaking Spanish comfortably, and I couldn't thank you enough for your help with that. We stand behind our program with a 30-day full refund policy. If you're not happy within 30 days, we'll give you your money back, no questions asked. To find out if the Academy is right for you, click the link on the screen or in the description below. All right, well, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit the like button. It really does help me out a lot. It helps the video get shared with more people, which helps me be able to keep teaching you Spanish. I really do appreciate it a lot. Muchas gracias por ver este video y nos vemos en el próximo. Adios.